Let's start off with this play, the interception that happened basically immediately. So what's going to happen here is it's a man coverage situation here for Miami. So, okay, hey, usually a pretty good situation. Let's find a one-on-one -on -one matchup that you like. And this is Jalen Waddle. And let's be honest, Jalen Waddle against anybody is usually a one-on-one -on -one matchup that Tua uh, likes. There is going to be a blitz on this play. Uh, but actually, in a way, that kind of makes this route even better right? Because there's no one over the middle of the field. There's someone deep over the middle of the field, but where Waddle is running, it is a pure one-on-one -on -one matchup. Tua is going to take the snap on this play. He is going to eventually look, uh, you know, well, actually, before we get to Waddle, right here, there is a little bit of pressure up the middle, but I'll be honest, like, this is the NFL. Usually you have something like this. Usually you have some sort of area where you have to, you know, move around a little bit. Give credit to the defender for sure. But at the same time, you know, it, I, this is no excuse for missing a throw, in my opinion. You could argue the weather is, but this, to me, is not an excuse. Watch as Tua is going to kind of throw off his back foot, which to me is a mis you know, I think you, got, you can hopefully navigate it a little bit better. But even so, this is wide open. I mean, this has an opportunity to be a completion and get you into Kansas City Chiefs territory right away. Instead, it's overthrown and ends up getting intercepted. So it would have been fourth down. They would have had to punt anyway. So, you know, which, hey. Field position does matter, especially in a game like this, but maybe wouldn't have been not, not the end of the world, not the worst interception in terms of value, but at the same time, it was a missed opportunity. If that's a completion, then you get the ball and maybe you can score points on that drive. Forget about, you know, letting, uh, you know, bad things happen to you. So definitely, you know, a, a missed opportunity from that perspective. Also heading over here, this was an interesting play. So the Chiefs uh, appear to be expecting some sort of a rushing play. It's second down and one. And, you know, second down and one's often a good opportunity to take a shot, right? Because the team might be expecting a running play. You can kind of try to fake as though you're running the football and then throw the ball deep. And even if you don't get it, hey, it's third down and one, not the end of the world. So that's kind of what uh, Miami is going to do here, where you see the package that they're in. Looks like they're going to run the football. But if you can get a situation with only a single safety deep, you almost always want to take the shot towards Tyreek Hill. Tua is going to take the snap, and yeah, Tua's not really messing around here. Tua knows where he wants to put the football, get the ball into the area of Tyreek Hill. Tyreek Hill is wide open on this play, and again, I feel like if the weather is 72 and sunny, then you're probably seeing Hill, you know, get hit in stride down the field. Tua, you know, uh, can put it perfectly accurate, all that good stuff. But that is not the situation. This is very chilly temperatures out there. And I do wonder how much, again, maybe it's making an excuse for Tua or maybe it's just recognizing the reality of the situation that it is a cold game. And of course, that could affect somebody, in fact, how they throw the football. Tua's throw is behind, but you know what? The weather doesn't seem to be affecting Tyreek Hill too much, does it? I mean, you know, really good stuff by Hill, not just to make the grab, but find his way into the end zone for a touchdown. So great stuff there by Hill and definitely, you know, a really important play in the game to kind of keep them alive, it felt like, because that was kind of really kind of their offense, uh, you know, mostly was, was that one play. Going over to something like this, so this is another, I think, real issue with Miami. Because, like, listen, okay, weather causing some, you know, concerns, whatever. Like, missed throw, okay, that happens. But, you know, part of why I, I did pick Miami to win this game and part of why I did was I still felt like they were going to get open enough. I still trusted, even in the cold, Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddell to get open and make some plays. But in a situation like this, it's a, you know, cover two man concept. Two is going to take the snap, and like, listen, this, it's a tough coverage to get open against. It is, but nobody's open. I mean, that's just the reality of the situation right here. So when you can't get guys open, then you're going to have issues. You you are. I mean, at the end of the day, you know, people can blame Tua in certain scenarios, but the reality is no quarterback looks good when nobody's getting open. Nobody's getting open for Tua. Again, third down and five, important play. You want to get the first down. What do you do here? Well, you see Tua, he is going to try and see if he can scramble out and see if he can pick up the first down, and he just, he can't. There, you know, No one ended up getting open, nothing worked out, and they weren't able to pick up the first down. This is something that, at the end of the day, you know, you went out and got Tyreek Hill and uh, Jalen Waddle to prevent this, and it just, you know, wasn't happening here, and Tua not able to make, make it ha work. Also, something like this, I mean, this is just, listen, again, is, okay, guys aren't getting open, whatever. Maybe it's, you know, you can't cut as well in the cold. I don't know. Uh, guys aren't getting open. Even that, you can sit here and say, well, that's a, you know, a physical issue. It, it's, you know, and maybe it's just good defense because the Chiefs do obviously uh, play good defense. So maybe it's just simply that. That being said, though, uh, you know, uh, I do think it's fair to bring up, like, Miami just made mistakes. Like, they just beat themselves at times. Something like this is just them beating themselves. 
So you see the way this blocking concept is supposed to work. Uh, you have, you, you know, your left guard and center are going to double team the interior defensive lineman, and then the, you know, tackle has a one-on-one -on -one matchup. Okay, simple enough. But here's the issue. Kansas City is going to have a player blitzing on that side of the ball. Okay, well, again, no big deal. Obviously, blitzes are designed to confuse people, but there's still an easy game plan, right? You have three offensive linemen in the area, three defenders. This is something that, you know, good offensive linemen are able to figure out. Good, you know, well, uh, well coached units usually figure this stuff out. Watch as one Tua takes the snap, the, the guard is not getting over there. And now you're in a weird situation if you're a tackle of who do you block. Typically, you're supposed to block from the inside out, meaning that he would go there. That's what, you know, you can then do. But the obvious issue, George Karloftis is just completely unblocked here. And this was a preventable mistake. Again, if you get beat, you get beat. It is what it is. You can't control that. But like, you can control this stuff. As you see, Karloftis comes in and really disrupts that play, he gets the sack right there. So, uh, you know, uh, people will sit there and it, it just, I don't know. The Chiefs rush the passer well. The Chiefs are able to do this well. You don't need to make it easier on them, but they just did. They made it easier on them. All right, let's talk about Tua and the Dolphins, which there's no getting around it. This was a disaster. It was a disaster. And, and like, listen, I mean, the weather, we'll talk about the weather. We'll talk about how that was a, a factor and, you know, how much does that matter and all of that stuff. But, you know, at the end of the day, part of why they were playing in this weather is because they also blew a game last week where if they won that one, then they wouldn't have had to worry about playing in Kansas City. They would be at home uh, playing against the Pittsburgh Steelers, which they probably would have liked a lot more. And while I definitely have to give credit to the Chiefs defense, what they were able to do in this game, uh, really, th there was a lot of ugly offense, I thought, by Miami. So let's just talk about it. So yeah, that's kind of just how I viewed this game in general. Also, this is a small thing, but a, something I still wanted to note is seven minutes left for Miami. They're down six. Uh, they're down 19 points. Uh, it was a you know, fourth down and 16 at their own 30 or at the opponent's 31 yard line. They elected to kick a uh, or not kick a field goal and instead throw a pass, which that was confusing. And they threw the pass way short of the first down marker. For me personally, I thought you know. Even if it's a long field goal, unless you don't think the kicker can physically make it that far, I feel like it's even if it's just kind of a you know a, a hail mary type thing, feels like that has a better chance than a, converting a fourth and six, uh, which sixteen, which again would have made it a sixteen point game. I don't think it would have mattered at that point, but still, uh, that was a weird little thing. Just in general, though, it's just a, a, an absolute disaster. The l lucky thing for Miami is that you know the Jaguars collapsed in even worse fashion, and you know we. The Eagles still have to play their playoff game, but that's not going great for them. But this was a collapse. There's, there's no getting around it. They had the Division One, they blew that, uh, and then in this game, they just they played terribly. And you know, uh, it's going to be a going to be a narrative until they find a way to fix it at this point because this was a a rough game for them. That's what I think. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from y'all, and of course, as always, thanks for watching.